I'll be talking about a problem which is uh, hard to treat but has a lot of variations, a lot of different ways in which uh, you can treat this problem. That is that of a persistent CSF leak in the post-operative uh, period. And uh, there are very few sites in spine surgery which is as discomforting as uh, having to see a CSF leak from the wound. So the incidence of uh, uh, dural tears in spine surgery is as high as 17%. And there are cases where you can have uh, a late uh, presentation of uh, dural tears, which is relatively rare, but uh, present. Uh, it's also interesting to know that there are varying definitions as to what constitutes an actual CSF leak. Is it a CSF fistula, which comes out through the incision? Is it a presence of a pseudomeningocele under the wound, uh, but not uh, actual CSF leak? Or uh, are there, and there are papers which kind of consider both, both of them. Uh, together. So there is some discrepancy upon how do you define a CSF leak as well. So one of the first critical things is the spinal dura is made up of only one layer compared to the cranial dura which is made up of two layers. So the spinal dura is less forgiving than the cranial dura. And that's also one of the reasons why, why you use a smaller caliber of needle uh, to close the spinal dura. So spinal dura, as uh, Amit, you were asking, uh, we usually use 5-0 or 6-0, smaller the better. Uh, so the main uh, goal is to use a, th uh, a needle and thread in which the thickness of the thread is more than that of the needle because a lot of time there are puncture holes through which there's a CSF egress as well. So what are the scenarios of CSF leak? So we, uh, I think Dr. Umesh nicely covered how to prevent CSF leak, so I will keep away from that. There are second question is, how do you treat a frank CSF fistula versus a pseudo meningocele and is there a difference in management of both? How do you treat a CSF leak with infection? And uh, sorry. And the fourth one is, what do you do if you have a leak after a failed repair? So you have had a primary surgery, you thought you did a good job, you uh, did a re-exploration, you closed it again, still the patient is having leak. So what do you do? So these are all the different scenarios of CSF uh, leaks which you can have in the post-operative period and answer to each of them is different. So the causes of uh, delayed CSF leaks, so this is again a rare uh, uh, problem, uh, usually C CSF leaks which happen more than five to six days after the primary surgery is classified as a delayed CSF leak. You can have delayed CSF leak up to about three months from the time of uh, the primary surgery. So you can have an unrecognized leak at the time of the surgery which you are not able to identify and obviously do not close. You saw a dural tear, you saw that the arachnoid was intact so there was no CSF out pouching but the thing is over the, after a period so you did not bother to suture it. So what happened is the patient started straining, walking, physical activity, this uh, arachnoid ruptured and then he is having CSF leak. Sometimes you have these residual bone spurs which erode the thinned out dura, especially you remember that a dura is a pulsatile structure, so uh, uh, it can go and hit against the uh, bony spur causing a CSF leak. You can have a suboptimal closure of the dural tear at the time of the primary surgery and uh, the last two are the patient factors where radiation and poor patient nutrition. So what are the features of a delayed CSF leak? So you can have, as I said, five days to three months. Symptoms are usually headache, dizziness, nausea, which is basically low pressure symptoms, loss of CSF uh, from the uh, cranial cavity, which is causing uh, these symptoms. MRI can reveal that there is uh, dural damage or CSF outflow, sinus formation or pseudomeningocele formation. A chemical analysis of the fluid can reveal uh, for beta transferrin will be positive. So it tells us that it is CSF indeed and not any other fluid. So, Let's come to some of the controversies. So this was a very, very highly cited experimental paper which said which is the best suture material to close the dura. So the 6-0 proline was considered to be the best. Uh, whether you do it locking or uh, continuous, the uh, results were exactly the same. And as I told you, the ideal suture material should be one in which the suture diameter is more than the needle diameter. However, uh, in 2019, there was a meta-analysis of all the papers published so far and then the results again kind of reversed and that there they noted that whether you use sutures or sealants, they have similar efficacy in CSF leak, so in direct contraindication to the previous uh, biomechanical paper. Sutures or sealants had a similar CSF uh, infection rate and no particular sealant was superior to another. So whether you use uh, bioglue, 
uh, TCL or any other uh, thing, uh, it had the same. The only one thing was that MISS had a lower incidence of CSF leak irrespective of the sealant use. Now, let's go from con uh, conservative management to more surgical approaches. So, conservative management, RCTs have shown that pacing the patient in a prone position is the only method which reduces the CSF pressure and the uh, column as per the Bernoulli's theorem and that causes a decrease in the post-op CSF leak. Use of acetazolamide, uh, again RCTs have shown that it is of no use. Whether you do early mobilization or you give prolonged bed rest, again RCTs have not been able to show which one is better. There is some evidence that pressure bandages, uh, uh, bed, nutri bed rest, nutrition, the duration of which is unclear. The main reason is that there are a lot of variables for this, the size, the location, duration, leak, infection, etc. So it's very difficult to get recommendations on these factors. So the lumbar drain is the workhorse for uh, uh, management of uh, post-operative CSF leak. So it has a success rate of as high as 85 to 94 uh, percent. However, lumbar drain per itself has a lot of complications. You can have over drainage, you can have meningitis, you can have pneumocephalus, you can have root irritation uh, due to the placement of the uh, uh, lumbar drain itself. Also, how much time are you going to keep the lumbar drain? Whether you're going to keep for three days, five days, seven days, uh, literature is not clear on this. I usually prefer to keep it for less than uh, five days because after that my infection rates are much higher. Volume of drainage, how much are you going to drain? It's again not clear. Efficacy of these three, subfascial drains, epidural blood patches, local pressure bandages, dynaplast, the efficacy of all these measures are still unclear. So this is a uh, paper from, uh, uh, from Chabra Sir's group. This is actually surgical repair without dural exploration. So he had six patients out of uh, 1,929 who had uh, CSF leak and dura was not explored in any of these cases. So what they did is they just did a deep wound resuturing and uh, serial dressings and that itself took care of the CSF leak. For the pseudomeningoceal patient, uh, the cyst was excised and there was ligation of the neck. So here is one patient who had a, who had sent an image on the picture, looks ghastly, large pseudomeningoceal that you can see. Uh, so he had basically an L5-S1 disc herniation and uh, the surgeon had performed a laminectomy and discectomy, intra-op the surgeon uh, had a dural tear which was covered with fat and he thought he had repaired it properly. However, the patient continued to have a wound gape, CSF leak, the surgeon again uh, went in and did a secondary suturing. Though there was no frank CSF leak from the, uh, from the wound, there was this large pseudomeningoceal, so lumbar drain was also inserted at, uh, for on post-op day 5 after the second surgery. Still, uh, this continued, you st see that the swelling is quite large, it's about 10, 10 into 4, uh, it's not very clear on the images but the skin has completely uh, thinned out, so impending rupture, this is the post-operative uh, post MRI which shows a large pseudomeningoceal, so how are you going to treat this, where are you going to put your lumbar drain? So those are the uh, questions uh, which were asked. So are you going in and doing a redo of the dural tear when it has already been attempted twice? Do you think you, I will be able to do a better job than the previous surgeon is something which I was not sure. The dura might be friable so it might not still hold the sutures. So this is what I did for this patient was a CSF diversion. It's a, uh, it's a last resort. So what happens is you put a lumboperitoneal shunt in these patients. So, but the problem is it's a foreign body and there's a risk of infection. Uh, in these cases. So pseudomeningoceal fortunately settled down completely and the lumboperitoneal uh, shunt I could remove it after six weeks. So for, so it was like a six weeks of an internal drainage and fortunately the patient was doing well. This is another nasty tumor of the CVJ or meningioma. And then we might have to wind okay, up. Okay, yeah, sorry. So again pseudomeningoceal, the tumor moved nicely but had a large pseudomeningoceal. I went in, re-explored with a facial graft. Lumbar drain, five days, swelling again reappeared. Finally, I had to go back again to do a lumboperitoneal shunt. Now the patient is doing well. So this is, this is the last and most important slide. So an algorithm for a post-operative CSF leak is to first anticipate 
know which patient is going to have a uh, uh, likely CSF leak in the post-operative period, identify the clinical signs, explain the patient and relatives, rule out infection, consider placing the patient in a prone position uh, or probably even a Tendlenburg position depending whether it's cervical or lumbar site of leak, consider re-exploration and primary repair if you think that it was a dorsal tear uh, which you can suture it. Safest way is to put a lumbar drain for the first three to five days and then maybe consider suturing the wound, just mainly the facial layer and the skin layer. We can do this under local. Wound lay exploration and repair of the dural tear with paraspinal muscle flaps have also been described to kill the dead space. And CSF diversion procedure is a last resort for this. Thank you. Thank you.